In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Game Boy Advance emulation up and running on a Wii U using RetroArch. The Game Boy Advance remains to this day one of my absolute most favorite handheld systems ever released. It was just a great continuation of the Game Boy line. The ability to link four GBAs together to play multiplayer was just amazing for the time. And the library of games is just phenomenal. When it was announced that Game Boy Advance games would be coming to the Wii U Virtual Console, I was really excited, and a lot of my favorite games actually did make it onto the service. Unfortunately, not every game did, but thanks to Homebrew, we can actually overcome that limitation now and run Game Boy Advance games through RetroArch. And not only that, we also get to overcome some of the limitations of the Virtual Console and implement things like proper scaling, ghosting effects, and other types of accuracy things or certification things that we see fit because we have control in RetroArch. So in this video I'm going to show you how to get Game Boy Advance games on your SD card, set up a games playlist, and go over core options for GBA games. So let's dive in. Now to get started with Game Boy Advance emulation you need Game Boy Advance games and you could dump these from your own physical collection using a number of different methods. And I actually have a video on my channel showing you how to dump Game Boy Advance games and BIOS files if you're interested. I'll have a link in the description below to this one. Alternatively, you can actually dump your Wii U Virtual Console GBA games as well if you are so interested. But once you've sourced your Game Boy Advance games, all we need to do is put them onto our Wii U SD card. So this is my Wii U SD card, and I made a folder in it named RetroArch ROMs, and this is where I'm going to be putting all of my games that I'm going to use within RetroArch. So if I go in here, I have SNES games, because I've done an SNES tutorial so far, and now we're doing Game Boy Advance, so I'm just going to drop my Game Boy Advance games right alongside my Super Nintendo games. And once you have those games placed, you are technically ready to start playing Game Boy Advance games, but there's one more optional completely optional step that I really like to do for Game Boy Advance, and that is put a Game Boy Advance BIOS into my RetroArch system folder. That way when I load up Game Boy Advance games, it gives me the nice Game Boy Advance boot logo, and I just am so fond of it that I need to have it when I do Game Boy Advance games. Now again, in the video tutorial I have on my channel, I show you how to dump your Game Boy Advance BIOS from either an actual Game Boy Advance system or the Game Boy Player if you have GBI Homebrew enabled. Again, the link to this video will be in the description, so that way you can get all this stuff very easily on your own, in a legal sort of manner. But once you have sourced a Game Boy Advance BIOS, it needs to be named GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. And once it's named properly, we need to put this into our RetroArch system folder. So back in our Wii U SD card, I'm going to go back up to the root of the folder. We're going to go into the RetroArch folder. And from here, we're going to go into Cores and there is a system folder right here. So we're going to open this up and drop our Game Boy Advance BIOS into that system folder. So if you want to use a Game Boy Advance BIOS for your emulated GBA games, there's the steps. Again, completely optional, the games will run without it so you don't actually need it, but it's kind of a quality of life thing that I really like to have. But once you have your games and your BIOS place if you want it, you can close out of your SD card pull it out of your computer and put it back into your Wii U. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so please refer back to that video for RetroArch installation and initial settings, as well as installing this forwarder channel you see here on the screen. But anyway, once you have your SD card placed in your Wii U and the Wii U is booted back up, boot into RetroArch using either the homebrew launcher or this forwarder channel that I have selected here. Once RetroArch has finished booting, we are free to begin loading up our GBA games. And to do this, we can go to Load Core, scroll down to the Nintendo section, and select our GBA core. I like to use MGBA personally. And now that the core is loaded, I could go to Load Content, SD Card, my RetroArch ROMs folder, my Game Boy Advance folder, and I could choose a game to start playing. So I could press A and then I would tell it to load under the current core of MGBA. I really don't like this method, I think it's slow. So instead what I like to do is go back to the main menu, press left and go down to the import content tab. From here I will do a manual scan. 
Content Directory, I'm going to choose SD, my RetroArch ROMs folder, and my Game Boy Advance folder. And for system name, I'm going to press right on the D-pad and go down to Nintendo and choose Game Boy Advance. And then we'll go down to Default Core, press A, and then same thing, right on your D-pad to go to Nintendo and find Game Boy Advance, and I'm choosing MGBA. Now, if you have your games separated into subfolders, make sure Scan Recursively is on, and if you have them zipped, make sure Scan Inside Archives is on. But once you have your options selected as you need them, go down to Start Scan. And once the scan's completed, you should have a nice Game Boy Advance entry here, and it will list all of your Game Boy Advance games. Now, just as a quick note, we will go over how to add thumbnails to these playlists and make them really shine in a future video. But now that the playlist is made, I'm free to go to any game I want, press A, press A again to tell it to run, and my Game Boy Advance game should boot right up. Ta-da! And here we are playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 Game Boy Advance version on a Wii U, despite the game never having been officially released on the Wii U Virtual Console. I absolutely love this game. I don't know, there was something about this version that I just thought was the coolest thing ever at the time, and I just played this game to death. But for those of you looking to get Game Boy Advance emulation up and running on your Wii U, that's pretty much the whole process. Really not a whole lot to this one. Get your games. And optionally, if you want that BIOS boot screen, just add your Game Boy Advance BIOS to the system folder. Again, completely optional. You don't need it, but I just think it's a really neat touch to have it. So for those of you looking to get Game Boy Advance games on your Wii U that weren't in the Virtual Console, congratulations. You are finished. That's really all there is to it. But if you'd like to see some of the advanced core options, stick around as we are going to go over those now. So to change our core options within RetroArch, we first need to press the home button on our Wii U gamepad. And this brings us into our RetroArch quick menu. And from here, we can scroll down to options and press A. Now, the first option available to us is the solar sensor level, and this is used for the Boktai games. There were different solar levels that were needed to activate different things in the game, and this lets you choose those. So you can go up to level 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or just leave it at 0. So darkness, maximum brightness. So use this as you need to to play Boktai. Next is allow opposing directional input. This isn't something that I personally need or use. If you know you need it, you can enable it here. Next, we have the Game Boy model. I leave this on auto detect because I'm only using MGBA to play GBA games, so it detects them just fine. If you want to use MGBA to play Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, you can, but there are better emulators for it, so I just really don't recommend it. The next option is use the BIOS file if found. You could just leave this on. If you don't have a BIOS file, it won't matter. If you do, it'll just have the BIOS boot logo on. And then next is the skip BIOS intro, so if you did happen to place a BIOS into your system folder and you don't want the animation to come up every time you load up a GBA game, you can turn this option on to disable that. We're going to skip use Super Game Boy Borders just because we're not using Game Boy games on this. Skip idle loop remove, we want to leave this on remove known. GBA games are running at full speed, so we don't need to worry about frame skip or frame skip threshold or frame skip interval. Our next option is color correction, and this is more of an accuracy thing if you want it. You don't have to enable this, but if you turn on color correction and change it to Game Boy Advance, it will mimic the Game Boy Advance's more washed out color palette. Again, this is more of a personal preference thing. If you like having more vibrant colors, leave it off. If you want that more accurate experience, you can turn it on. I prefer accuracy myself, so I like to have it on. Our next option is Inner Frame Blending, and this one tries to mimic LCD ghosting, which is used in certain games to give different effects. So it's an option I definitely like to have on, as it just makes the experience more authentic. Now for the Wii U, I like to use LCD ghosting fast, as accurate can cause some slowdowns in certain games. So I like to leave it on fast, it still gives a pretty similar experience, but no performance hit. It basically looks like that when you're in motion. It's a little more blurred rather than sharp, but it's pretty authentic to uh, the Game Boy Advance experience. And again, some games need it for their transparency effects. 
So mess with it, see if you like it. I like to have it on personally. It looks really good on the Wii U gamepad too. I think this is like really cool. But again, experiment with it. If you like having it on in some games or off in other games, you can disable them or enable them as needed. And you can also save a game options file depending on the game. So if there's a game you want it on for, you can save that by going to create game options file up here at the top of the options menu. And then the last option available in MGBA is to enable Game Boy Player Rumble features. So you can enable this and then restart your emulation. And later GBA games that were built for Game Boy Player will have Rumble features enabled in them. And this will have that uh, go to your Wii U gamepad, I believe. So this can cause glitches and lag, so use at your own discretion. I'm just going to leave it off personally. But that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. Again, if you have certain settings that you want for certain GBA games, like the LCD ghosting, you can save a per game override for those in the options menu. Alternatively, if you plan on using the same settings for every Game Boy Advance game, go back out into the quick menu, go down to overrides, and save the core overrides. That way, every time you load up a Game Boy Advance game, these are the options that will greet you. Now, normally in this part of the video, I'd cover shaders, but I'm still trying to figure out Wii U shaders, so I'm going to be making a dedicated Wii U shader video sometime in the future, so stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it as far as getting Game Boy Advance games up and running in the Wii U version of RetroArch is concerned. They run great. You get some good accuracy. You can change the color palette to more closely uh, match that of an original GBA. Get the screen ghosting. It's pretty top-notch stuff. But as always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and be sure to hit that like or dislike button just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't already, please be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live. We're just getting started on the Wii U and there is a lot to cover. So hit that sub button, that notification bell so you can come along for the ride. If you're feeling generous and would like to drop more support, I always appreciate anyone who hits that join button here on YouTube or checks out the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Everyone who does so really keeps this channel going and I am so grateful to all of my champions for doing so. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.